Courtney Rowan and Danny Postma out here at Texas A&M Spring Football 2019. It is a Saturday afternoon, practice number three, and the team was in shell today. So first, just want to get to introducing my host here today with me, Danny. She's a student here in College Station, knows a lot about the recruiting process as her family has been going through all of that right now with her brother. Um, it also has very close ties to this Texas A&M football team. Her, her, what she sees out there is very interesting since she knows this team very well. So we're going to dive in it dive into it today talking first team offense there were no changes to the first team offense compared to what we saw on Wednesday when the team first came out here there was some changes in the second team offense a few changes including Vernon Jackson he was in at running back in place of Cordarian Richardson today uh, let's see Jackson showed how physical he was while Richardson the other day showed how coordinated he is uh, a couple other things Caleb Chapman, who was in a yellow shirt today, a no-contact shirt, he was in there today in place of Rashad Paul. Danny has been watching the tight ends very closely. I know a lot of you want to know about Baylor Cup and how he is looking out there. She has been paying close attention to what the tight ends have to offer. Yes, and I think with losing Jay Sternberger and Trevor Wood, I mean, and even with new um, coach Joe John Finley, I mean, there is a bunch of questions about the tight ends, but we have Glenn Beal running with the first team and Baylor Cup running with the second. And I think the pros to both of them, I mean, Beal, um, he just fits in right in with the offensive line. I mean, he can block very well and I think Baylor Cup catches anything that's thrown his way and I think it'll be a great option for coach Joe John Finley to have this upcoming season um, to either have someone blocking out there for him or he can have someone run downfield and catch a bunch of passes. And some great observations right there as far as the tight ends go. Uh, Baylor Cup definitely has some more size and physicality that he can fill into. Uh, he already looks great out there, though. Um, looking at the quarterbacks, obviously Kellamon looks more comfortable this year. He has stepped up as far as his leadership goes, his verbal leadership, because Travion Williams is no longer part of this team. Travion was a very big part of the leadership council and leadership part of the group as far as the offense goes. Um, as far as the quarterbacks go, Kellamon and Connor Bunt most comfortable out there as they should as since they have been here and have time with this team uh, you can tell that Kellen Mott is he has a quicker release um, his skill set his footwork is increasing and I know Danny has some notes as far as Zach Klausda goes and um, what she's seeing there and as far as the quarterbacks look right and I think so I think we obviously have our first and our second quarterback uh, locked in but Zach Calzada is our new early enrollee here and um, I think coach Fisher commented today on his footwork and his um, he has a great arm and I think um, even though he is an early enrollee that his knowledge is gaining very fast and um, I think he's learning a lot from his uh, first and second team quarterback. And I know that James Foster is also going to be uh, battling for the third position as well. And he has a good arm, but I don't think his um, full rotation has come in yet. And I think Zach Calzada uh, has. And I think it'll be interesting to see which one of them can battle it out for the third position. Great notes right there for sure. Sticking on the offensive side of the ball, one thing I noted down that Ben Miles was at fullback and has been with the fullback position on all the reps so far. Uh, it seems like he's got pretty clear lock to replace Colin Gillespie, who is actually out at practice today, but we will get to who all was in attendance today, all the visitors here in just a second, because there were quite a few as far as former players and recruits go. So we'll get to that in just a second. Let's stick to the first team and second team defense, what we noticed out there today. First team defense, all the same. Same thing as Wednesday, except during the second rep, Bobby Brown came in in place of Justin Matabuke. A few things to note there. There was a little bit of confusion at times as they were playing with four down linemen. Um, other than that, the team is getting, you know, like Coach Fisher said today, they know the drill at this point. So now it's just installing some new things like the four down linemen. Um, Danny has some notes on some interesting linebacker takes that she saw out there today. Right, and I thought it was interesting. So we actually have um, Aaron Hansford. He came in and, and is also still listed as a wide receiver, but he is actually um, going to be playing linebacker, and he is going to be following Buddy Johnson and Braden White. And so it'll be interesting to see what can, um, contributions he can make, even though he might be running with a second team, depending on if he can um, meet one of Buddy or Braden out for that first team position. Things like that that we're trying to keep note of all throughout spring because, as Coach Fisher said, spring is a time to kind of see where players fit in, get a feel for where players can could fit, and really lock down the first team, second team defense. So I know as an offense, and as, as spring goes along, the more idea we'll have as far as who's going to fall into those first team, second team spots. Now let's take a look at visitors today. 
Some former players that were here I already mentioned, Colin Gillespie, Travion Williams was here, Joseph Cheek, Robert Ferguson, Jesse Scott, who's from Wheaton College, Herman Johnson was from Skyline High School, Jermaine Effetti was here, uh, Bruce Math Matthews was here watching the offensive linemen. Danny has a few notes as far as what top recruits were here watching today. Yeah, we had a ton of recruits out, out here today, and some of those are Donovan Jackson, Bryce Foster was out here, John Paul Richardson was out here, um, Jalen Jones, Jalen Polk, Zach Evans was out here, and so was Damian George and J.D. Johnson. Another guy that was out here today that I noted was Damon DeMoss. Uh, he was once again wearing that maroon bonnet that you saw from the Nike opening camp. He has not taken that off yet. It's interesting to see how close him and Zach Evans are. I've noticed them bonding a lot, especially at the Nike camp. Here today, Zach was with his brother. Um, I know there's been some controversy as far as, you know, does his brother like A&M or not. They were both here today. They seem to be enjoying themselves. Um, as far as the offensive line goes, I know Kenyon Green was out here watching as well. Uh, Kenyon has been working very hard in the offseason. He sees these guys who are out here early, and he wants to be one of them. So he doesn't want anything to lack when he comes here in the summer because he's definitely trying to shoot for that starting job. Danny, we appreciate all of your insight today. We will be coming back to you on Monday uh, with more news and notes. Uh, today was practice three. Tune back in for Monday, practice number four with AM Spring Football. Danny with Courtney for Rivals.com.